thinking about this a whole lot because it seems like I don't know. It seems like a lot of Rangers fans, and maybe I'm misjudging this here, are talking about a lot of other things versus, hey, our first thing we need to do is lock up Jordan Montgomery. Um, like going out and buying other things? Yeah. And so, for example, I saw an ESPN. And look, Mike, I, I know MLB I'm Trade listening. Rumors yeah. has got a different deal and everything like that. But just ESPN says their projected contract for Jordan Montgomery, five years, $106 million, which would be 21.2 oh, per low. year. That is super low. Who said that? ESPN. Okay. And so, Wasn't it 160 on MLB trade rumors? Uh, it, it was. That's a big difference, right? Was, and I think they might have had him at a six-year deal. Yeah. But so, and ESPN's like, hey, he's our sixth best free agent. And whether it's Hayter, Otani, whoever, like I understand how good all those players are, but Jordan Montgomery, along with Evaldi, those two helped get you yeah. to the promised land. And it feels like people are like, oh, yeah, no, I hope we bring him back. Instead of like, we need to have him back. I, I, how about this? Is the reason I have heard from a lot of Ranger fans that are desperate to get Montgomery back. I, okay, I really good. have. Good. But is the Ranger fan preparing themselves? Because Chris Young has not come out and said that Jordan Montgomery is a key part to the offseason. Our number one goal is to bring Montgomery back, right? He has not come out and said anything like that. He hasn't said he doesn't want Montgomery. By the way, it's six years, $150 million wow. on uh, MLB trade rooms. Who knows what it's going to be, but just to give you an idea of, because $21 million, I think the Rangers get them as fast as possible. But if it gets to six for 150 I think that's where the Rangers are strongly considering – is that good value? Is that worth it? But I have heard a lot of Ranger fans uh, in the last, let's say, week talk to me about how desperate they want Montgomery back. I do want him back, but I'm also prepared to lose him too, if that makes sense. He, you know, he made the uh, he made the Astros look very not good. You know, like that's yes. that was my favorite part about it is he made them look bad, and so that's one thing I have to take into consideration. The other thing, too, I have to take into consideration is I do look at my I – I wrote this down yesterday, and if you don't have him going into the season, you have Ivaldi, you have uh, Gray, you have Dunning, you have uh, Heaney, and maybe Cody Bradford is a Sh starter. Scherzer. You, you have Scherzer. Sh Scherzer as well. You know, obviously health is going to dep right. depend on a lot of things there. And you still have the opportunity to, uh, to pay to, – to trade for somebody midseason if you need to. You know that's a that's a plan they they did it this year. They yeah. said midseason, let's go get a guy that has the death ball, and they went out and got him. Now that's not a guarantee, and people drive up the prices on you for sure in the middle of the season if you're in a, if you're in contention. But now that you just won, I think a lot of Rangers fans are like, look, you got to go do it again, and you can't do it without a guy that was a key part to it. And I'm 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 in agreement with that. I I agree. That was a dude that felt like. He was part of the clubhouse, that he was part of the, the culture that they started to grow in there, and that he liked it. But I did ask you and you, how much does winning the World Series with this team benefit the Rangers when negotiate with him? Does it, is it much of a difference? Is it, a, is it I'm a, sure at he, all? I'm sure he'd like to come back, but he's going to take the most money. I'd, I'd have to look up how much money Jordan Montgomery's made in his career. But if we're talking about... The Rangers are willing to offer him five for 110, and a team's willing to offer him six for 150. He has to take six for 150. Like, now, if he's made in a way, I'd still probably, most guys would choose that. An MLB uh, players union would say, hey, what are you doing? You're screwing over your fellow players by doing that. So. What if the opposing offer was five for 115? So five for 110 to be back on the world champs or five for 115 to go elsewhere? I don't know him, but I think he would choose the Texas Rangers okay. in that scenario because, I mean, you've done this before. If it's a Florida team versus a California yep. team, yep. if the California team's offering you $5 million more, that's about $20 million yes. less over five years because of state taxes yes. and how much it would be the cost of living, stuff like now that. Now you're talking Kevin's game with yeah. taxes, so, yeah. So, But like if it's that. a Florida team, you would get, let's just say, the same amount because there's no state taxes there is – I would look at it and say, I think Jordan Montgomery wants to be back with the Texas Rangers, but I don't think he's really going to give you much of a discount unless you're talking about $1 million per year over five years. I think you're doable in that. But if you start getting to, hey, it's $3 million per year over five years, and that's $15 million, yeah. I think you look at it from a family standpoint, from a man standpoint, supporting your family, and I get it. 
look, whether you have 105 million or 120 million at the end of five years, you've supported your family pretty <laughs> darn well financially. But still at the same time, they look at it and say, sure, I would like that 15 more million dollars. That might help me out later in life. And the, the extra year feels feels like a clincher to me because when I when we when we had talked about this off air, I saw I said maybe up to two million per year. But if it's an extra year anywhere else, then you're probably going to yeah. lose I that hope, negotiation. I hope the Rangers get him back. And obviously, I don't know if you're going with Shohei Otani here, but if Shohei can make a decision in, let's say, the next eight days or ten days as yep. we get close to Thanksgiving, that would help out the Rangers. Whether it helps him out by he's on the Rangers or it helps him out that he's officially signed with, let's just say, the Dodgers, and the Rangers know – we don't have to hold anything back on Montgomery or Hayter or making a trade for Devin Williams or whatever because they know that Otani is off the board. And for the 940, mm -hmm. we've gone over this a couple times. We got new listeners all the time, and we appreciate that very much. Tolo, turn it on, leave it on. Does income tax not play a role? When we talked with Shinsu Chu about this at spring training several years the ago. The wildest conversation you've ever been part of. It was so much fun, but he was very clear. Most guys don't care. He said, me? I definitely cared. And we talked about where's going to be the most total money when all is said and done. But he said, most guys don't care because that number doesn't go out in the press, right? Like, let's say Jordan Montgomery signs here for five for $100 million versus if he signs somewhere else, five for 115. The article yeah. is not going to say in the headline, yeah. but really it's only 98 million if you factor in the state income tax. Like that, mm. and it's the headlines that matter yeah. for a lot of folks. I have no clue who's interested in Jordan Montgomery. Plenty of teams will be and are, but they the three different people, three people pick three different teams. Rangers, no state income tax. Mets, a lot of state income tax. Giants, a lot, a lot of, of state, state income yeah. tax. So I don't know. Like that, that will the agent will bring that up. Now the agent gets paid on. I've brought this up before. He's going to get anywhere from three to five percent. That's negotiated between player and agent. If an agent's getting five percent, he's getting five percent of the total bill. He's not getting five percent after you pay taxes in. So the agent doesn't have a lot. He does have a little bit because he's representing you as a client. But if he's getting a $100 million contract in L.A. versus a $105 million contract in Texas, he's looking at the $120 million of, I'm going to get paid a hundred twenty. million. I'm going to get paid 5% of $120 million. I'm going to get paid 5% of $105 million. So the agent doesn't maybe push as much as you would think for that. The other thing, too, Kevin, is the Rangers do know him. You know, they, they got to see if, if there's a wart, they know. Uh, if, uh, if there's not, if they're like, man, he's, a, he's perfect then that gives them even better uh, ideas of uh, everything. And uh, we talk about this a lot. They gave him the chance to see what it's like playing here and yeah, and where, where that, you know, very how that true. sits with him. Now, Mike, did you get the opportunity to read the article I texted over to you yesterday? I have it on Bally's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, bring it up. I, honestly, you're going to educate me tremendously. I had the, the dinner with my agent and a couple of minor league prospects. That was fun to get to meet and stuff like that, but I did not get to read that article yet. So thank you very much to Lindsey Crosby for going through the court transcripts and getting some of this information. So per... The happenings because we've talked about how Diamond Sports has been involved with litigation with yeah. teams, leagues for some time. These were both Bally sports teams that were in the World Series. One, they dropped. They dro They didn't think the Diamondbacks, I don't know this for a fact, but they obviously didn't think they were worth keeping in 2023. They believed that the Rangers were worth keeping in 2023. So in the documents for the court hearings, Bally says it plans to conclude broadcasting baseball at the end of the 2024 season. Okay. Now, that's not to say that they wouldn't still try to wiggle out of some of these arrangements, some of these mm -hmm. contracts that they already have, but I wouldn't imagine the Rangers would be one of them for reasons we've discussed in the past, and then you add on a World Series. But they'll be done after 2024, which gives the teams, per again, the court records, a year to figure out their broadcast future. And Lord knows, I bet a lot of these teams have already been lining up contingency plans thinking that Diamond was going to miss payment or whatever or just release them like they did with the Padres. So the court papers say, Bally's, they're done after one more year of baseball. Wow. 
So you're saying that the 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 guys out there that have been like, hey, I can't watch Rangers, might have a better option in the future. Yeah, I, I hate to tell you, this is probably not going to make any feel anybody feel better right now, but you still have next year to go when the Rangers are now the defending world champions. It's, so, like, that's probably – people aren't going to be like, yay, 2025. They're going to be like, come on, dude. It's going to be interesting if there's enough teams, and I don't think there will be yet, if there's enough teams that Amazon Prime becomes the official television – of the official app of the Major League Baseball. Or Apple TV. I mean, or Apple we see, TV. Yeah, right. Whatever it is. Like, yeah, huge yeah. It's just going to be interesting. This is going to be – we're headed towards a whole new world in Major League Baseball. And guess what? We are headed that way in the NBA, and we're headed that way in NHL hockey too. Football's doing its thing where you have to look at 17 zillion different things for Sunday 8 a.m. games. or. I, I watched hockey on Hulu last night, Mike. Okay. I, did, I did have that moment where I was like, crap where is this game and i went to hulu to find it it will be interesting i'm just hoping they still have pre and post game uh shows i do too i I really i agree with mike i want him to have that's why i wanted to send that to you because i was like i don't know what this means but supposedly for for mlb to take over the diamondbacks because we had on brandon webb i believe they only had like a 15 minute or 10 minute pregame show going into the game through MLB, wow. so they pretty much cut out most of a pregame show and just pretty much said, all right, here it is. The Diamondbacks are about ready to take on the Dodgers. Clayton Kershaw is facing Zach Gallen. Hey, uh, Mark Grace, Brandon Webb, what do you think? Coming back next, we have our broadcasters to introduce this game. We'll take a commercial break, and the game will start. Like, that was after Bally's left Arizona. That was pretty much a pregame show there, and their postgame show was not long either, where you'd usually get – about a 40-minute post-game show is what you get on Bally's after a game is over. They went down to like a 15 or 20-minute because at that point, I don't know how much they can sell, whether it's to Whataburger or whatever, to to do a pre- and post-game show. And that's the cool part about the local nature of it. But the thing that sucks is Diamond Sports Group fundamentally misjudged the future of television yeah, they did. when they made all these deals. What if Fox Sports comes back in and buys it for like 40% of what they sold it for? I mean, oh. I have no clue, but could you see that? Like if Fox yeah. Sports like, hey, you know what? We can get back in, I, uh, but we can get, we can buy this. We sold it for, I don't even know how much. Let's say $8 billion. The, the only reason I don't think they can get in that low is because we've talked about this many times. This is just my opinion. There's too many streaming services and you're already starting to see like Hulu is okay. probably about to disappear. Because it's going to become part of Disney, or maybe they're just going to have one like major platform. Is I think these spots want sports to help them set apart. So I think they would come in and be like, "All right, fine, we'll give you fifty percent, or you know, whatever." Drive that it, price yeah, up, it, kind of like the Otani dealings, right? That's that's where the Rangers are involved, just so that everybody else has to pay a premium. I mean, you're stuck there because you know that nobody it's not like nobody's interested yeah you can't go i heard nobody wants you otani like they're gonna be like no like eight teams are actively trying to get me right now so what do you got